scent itself is such a powerful tool that people use to like unlock memories, unlock feelings, unlock emotions, unlock times in their life, you know? Mm-hmm. And actually, I always tell this, this is kind of like a joke, but um, I dated a guy a few years ago and he got me a fragrance for my birthday. And it was a really nice fragrance, very expensive. Mm-hmm. However, like the moment I sprayed it, I thought to myself, this is never going to work out. I've been dating you for X, Y, Z amount of time. And you smelled this and thought this is something I would wear. Like, I knew you don't know me. Whoa. In my mind, I immediately thought, there's no way you know me. (laughs) I would never wear this. This is not, like, it's just not my taste. And you don't know that about me. (laughs) Because you don't care to know that about me. You've never picked up on, oh, this is something that she would like. Welcome to the Dr. Daff Show. Today, I have a fun and special guest with me, Miss Funmi Monet. Funmi is a beauty and skincare enthusiast, digital creator on fragrances, beauty. She is also a therapist and mental health advocate. Over the years, she's worked as a licensed therapist, which has helped her in an immense way and her appreciation for finding ways to practice self-care and self-love. Knowing how popular she had become from making content on fragrance, she created her own fragrance line, Exalté, with her business partner. This was a dream come true. Her goal for setting her brand was to unlock the space where you don't really see a lot of dark-skinned Black women like herself. A woman who has undoubtedly left her mark in this space is Fumi Monet from Dallas, Texas. Within the past year, she has built an engaged, massive audience that always stays connected to her content. Funmi stands by the fact that everyone should wear whatever they want, no matter what anyone has to say about it, including her. Especially me. (laughs) Especially you. Welcome, Funmi. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Like This is my first like L.A. Thing. I feel like a country girl in the big city. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you are definitely making your mark here. We're really happy to have you. Yeah, I'm so honored to be here. And I'm excited to finally talk about my number one love, which is fragrance. So glad to talk to, about fragrance <laughs> to someone else that loves it as much as me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my friends are so tired of me. They're like, okay, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start loving fragrance? Something um, you've loved your whole life? I feel like fragrance is something I've always really enjoyed because I feel like you don't have to be an expert Or have a particular skill to be able to just want to smell good. Mm -hmm. So I feel like probably since maybe high school, you know, I've I've just always enjoyed smelling good. But then in college, I actually worked in the fragrance department just, you know, as a sales associate. And then I eventually worked as a brand rep for one of the bigger um, fragrance brands as well. So it gave me a chance to learn about not only how people gravitate towards scents and like what, why people gravitate towards scents, but also like... Um, like how, how fragrances are marketed, you know, and how, um, these brands want these fragrances to reach the masses as well. So I've just always just kind of had a fragrance in my back pocket. And with social media, especially, I realized that fragrance can be a very inclusive space because once again, you don't have to have like a certain skin tone or a certain like skin condition or a certain like look, a certain size to say, okay, I want to smell good. You know? That's right. So it's been wonderful. It's like an equalizer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It should be. It should be. It should be, yeah. That's really cool. So you got to hear from the brands in terms of like what they are looking for with fragrance and from people in terms of what makes a person like a certain thing. Mm-hmm. So when you were working in these department stores, did you allow people just to come and test out what they liked or did you lead with something like based on questions you ask them about themselves? That's a really great question. I have found that most people like to browse and just pick up something and smell it. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of times people want to be guided. You know, they want to, you know, they'll tell you, I really like something that's floral. You know, I like a sweeter fragrance or I like something really fresh and clean. I don't like something that's going to be too strong. So in that instance, you know, you can guide them towards options that you would think, you think that would be best suited towards them and maybe their, um, their lifestyle or their taste. But I have found, I'm really fortunate that when I started with retail, I, you know, wasn't incentivized with like commission. So it wasn't like, okay, I have to, I have to promote Gucci this week, or I have to promote mm-hmm. Flower Bomb. Like this, these sales have to happen. Right. And I just found that like, it, it makes people happier to connect with the fragrance they genuinely enjoy and have like a really good like interaction with versus you trying to convince someone, oh, you should like this. And that's really frustrating when that happens, especially because it's like some people who struggle with 
speaking up for themselves, maybe they'll just say, okay, even if they don't really like it mm-hmm. because they feel like they're getting pressure to purchase it. Oh, yeah. Fragrance is such a personal thing. But with that, how is it that you navigated the fragrances changing on people because they spray it, right? Mm-hmm. And then maybe they're like, oh, I like this. This is fruity. I'm going to buy it. Mm-hmm. But then later on, it it dries down and it changes into something different. This is something that you let them know, like, okay, this may change on you. Walk around a little bit and come back. I think that I'm just, I'm so, maybe it was just the time I was working. I'm so glad it wasn't like commission based because I wasn't like, okay, you have to make this sell right now and you have to buy this. Mm. Like if someone said, hey, I'm someone who fragrances tend to change on me a little bit. I need to walk around and maybe take a sample home. I'm like, okay, like I'll see you next week or tomorrow (laughs) or later today if you want to come back. And if you don't, okay, that's fine too. Um, I think it's allowing people to not feel pressured into something because at the end of the day, like your your scent memory and how you associate this fragrance, it can be either a really positive memory or a terrible memory. And I always think, why not make it something that, you know, is a great, a great time for them, a great memory. You are so right about that. Because there are some times, because I'm so sensitive to fragrance, if I spend too much time with the sales associate trying a certain fragrance. And let's say even that day, my memory is not so good. Like I didn't have a great time in the mall or like traffic was awful. When I smell that fragrance again, my mind goes back to the sales associate. It goes back to that day and I can't even fully enjoy it. So it's powerful. Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing, like scent itself is such a powerful tool that people use to like unlock memories, unlock feelings, unlock emotions, unlock times in their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And actually I always tell this, this is kind of like a joke, but um, I dated a guy a few years ago and he got me a fragrance for my birthday. And it was a really nice fragrance, very expensive. Mm -hmm. However, like the moment I sprayed it, I thought to myself, this is never going to work out. I've been dating you for X, Y, Z amount of time. And you smelled this and thought this is something I would wear. Like, I knew you don't know me. Whoa. In my mind, I immediately thought, there's no way you know me. (laughs) I would never wear this. This is not, like, it's just not my taste. And you don't know that about me. (laughs) Because you don't care to know that about me. You've never picked up on, oh, this is something that she would like. Do you think a lot of men pick up on that? Because I will tell you, like, my girlfriends, we're talking about Jackie right now. My girlfriends, when they smell something, they're like, oh, (laughs) you would wear this. This smells like something you would wear. But I've never heard a man ever say this smells like something you would wear. I would say that, like, some, I I always just kind of assume that most people are not, like, this sommelier of fragrance. Like, they don't, like, know, like, every nuance of a fragrance. (laughs) Most people come in and say, oh, I like something sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like something, like, kind of dessert-like, you know, or I like something floral or, like, something just really clean. They can't tell you exactly what it is in particular, but, you know, you kind of know, like, when you're around someone long enough, like, okay, this person kind of always smells really florally, Mm -hmm. like, florally, and then they never know if it's, like, rose or, like, (laughs) peony or anything specific, but florally. Mm -hmm. Or this person tends to like sweeter fragrances. Okay. And so for me, like, I am someone that tends to like a sweeter fragrance. Okay. And this fragrance was like the complete opposite. Oh, I see. And I thought to myself, like, I mean, even if you don't know anything about fragrance, like, yeah. if you smell this, you would know I would never wear this. What if he wanted you to smell like that? I would never wear this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm too headstrong. I would never wear that. <laughs> That's so funny. No, you're right, though, because um, I've definitely, like, seen my mom. She is one of those people who likes to, like, look at fragrance, Mm -hmm. not necessarily wear them. So she lines them all up. And I'll smell fragrances that people have bought her. And I'm like, oh, these smell awful. Why would they buy this for you? Like, this doesn't even go with your essence. It was on sale. (laughs) It was on sale. (laughs) You're probably right. That's so funny. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I know. I mean, and the thing is, like, you know, with anything, you know, Mm -hmm. Once again, like sometimes people just buy things because of the packaging, you know? Yes. But in my mind, I thought like, this is someone who is supposed to really care about me. And I take the time. I have taken the time to get to know you and kind of know what your taste is. And you have not done the same for me, especially considering you knew I like fragrance. That's true. So you didn't take the time to figure out what I would like. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a red flag for me. Which yeah, well, you knew. I knew. It was It was just the beginning. <laughs> it was the beginning. <laughs> but it's, it, that was kind of like the point that I go back to when I think about um, also like, you know, getting to know people and like why it's important. Like when you care about someone, whether it's a friendship or, you know, a relationship that's a sister, a brother, a parent, you know, um, what it means to like intentionally um, select something that this person would like, especially if it's a gift. 
You're right. You're right about that. Moving within. I would never get my best friend a Home Depot gift card, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know she likes maybe a massage or get her nails done or Zara, you know. Home Depot, she'd be like, girl, what am I supposed to do? That's right. Redo my floors? <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. That's actually my favorite compliment is you smell good. Yes. I remember telling my husband that when we were dating. I was like, I love, like, that was the first thing that he said to me. And I'm like, I love that that was the first thing that you said because mm-hmm. that is my favorite compliment more than anything because to true to choose the right fragrance for me and my body yeah. it just says more in my opinion than like the way I'm dressed or you know my makeup and that kind of thing Absolutely. what scent do you think that men tend to find the most appealing on women um I have found that generally speaking men find sweeter fragrances very alluring you know it's this idea that it's something kind of sweet, something like edible, something that's very warm and comforting. Mm-hmm. So like that's why I always used to sell like a lot of GC Couture when I was oh, <laughs> working yeah. in, at the counter. Mm-hmm. And it was there were so many men that would buy it for like their girlfriends or their wives. Like, oh, my wife wears this. Or I really like, especially Valentine's Day. Oh, mm-hmm. I know people were wearing GC Couture on, Valent- on February 14th, <laughs> you know, but it's like sweeter fragrance. And that's why brands tend to push them out. That's why fragrances like Black Opium mm-hmm. or fragrances like Good Girl or like the Juicy couture's tend to do really well it because really well. it's just like well it smell, I don't know why it smells good but it mm-hmm. smells good like you can never pick out a particular nuance mm-hmm. per se but um it's just kind of something that it's like it's comforting you know I don't know I don't know what floral note it is I don't know what what particular anything is mm-hmm. some well not me myself not me no, I'm talking about people that come in. Oh, okay. Uh, so you do Other know. people. Yeah, okay. I know. I know. But like <laughs> other people like tend to just find them just alluring, you know, because they think, well, my grandma would wear this, but my girlfriend or my wife wears this. Uh, so I like that. Yeah. That's true. It's very simple in their yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> what are some tips that you learned about applying fragrance on yourself? Is there a way to apply it that matters? Um, you know, it's really interesting because I ask people what their taste preference is when they wear fragrances, right? So for some people, like, they want the whole room to smell them. Like, they want to, like they want their scent to just gravitate towards everybody around them, like mm-hmm. a cloud, you know? And some people, they like something a little bit more intimate. You know, maybe just, like, a little bit on their wrist, maybe a little bit behind their neck. Um, what I found best is fragrance does not substitute for good hygiene. So not bathing or not, like, you know, using deodorant or something <laughs> is not a precursor to just not do when you want to wear fragrance. Yeah. Um, so obviously having a, a clean base is a wonderful way to start. Okay. Um, and truthfully, mm-hmm. especially with my platform, I have realized that it is important to not assume Everybody knows what good hygiene looks like. That's right. I also have to remember sometimes it comes from a place of privilege to know, oh, well, so I had someone that taught me how to bathe properly and how to select the right deodorant or how to select the right type of, you know, under, I mean, anything, you know, mm-hmm. t- in order to have um, just the basic clean hygiene, you know? Mm-hmm. So when I see videos where it's like how to pick out a good body wash or how to pick out a good, good body cream mm-hmm. or how to select deodorant, mm-hmm. I just have to remember like, well, there's people out here who weren't taught that. Maybe they had absent parents. So good hygiene starts is a great way. Um, a great, maybe a matching body cream. You mm. know, like if you're wearing a vanilla fragrance, mm-hmm. a vanilla body cream. Okay. Um, and then spraying on your pulse points as much or as little as you prefer. Can you tell us where the pulse points are? Of course. So your pulse points are really the spots on your body where you tend to release the most heat. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the inside of your elbows, for example, um, behind your knees, like Crease, creasy spots. I always say creasy spots. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, behind your ears, you know, behind your shoulders or your neck, you know, the places where you tend to get hot. Um, and so I also tell people though, if you're sensitive to fragrance, to actually spray it behind your body. Mm-hmm. Because when you wear fragrance and you enjoy your fragrance, right? It's coming up. So you spray maybe your fragrance on your collarbone and you're smelling it all day on yourself. But for people that get migraines, mm-hmm. but they still want to wear fragrance, mm-hmm. spray behind you. Spray it behind your shoulders because now other people will still smell you, but now it's not coming up right under your nose. Mm. So you get an opportunity now to not have to like get a headache or feel like I can't wear fragrance. Spray behind your knees, you know, mm-hmm. or behind your ankles if you're adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, there's so many different ways to be able to enjoy fragrance mm-hmm. um, to suit your personal taste. Mm. Do you believe that people should have a signature fragrance? You know, I think that now. It's starting to become a little antiquated. Mm -hmm. The idea of, I wear this and this is what people know me for. I think that 
it's kind of a thing that brands kind of led with to kind of maybe help to encourage loyalty to fragrances like Chanel Number no. Five right. or um, maybe like Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue. Mm-hmm. I have found though that people that wear Chanel Number no. Five and Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue are mm-hmm. the most loyal people on earth. Yeah. Like they are <laughs> like, the most loyal because that is all they wear. Like, like in general, like oh, they're yeah. loyal. They people are in so general. loyal, like because they are they are <laughs> like stu- they are stuck to those fragrances. They will not try anything else. <laughs> uh, but I think that with with exposure to like so many different types of brands. Like people are now realizing that they're not limited to just whatever is at Ulta or whatever is at like Macy's or Sephora. Now, mm-hmm. oh, I can go into Neiman Marcus and try a niche brand. Yeah. Or I can go on Amazon and get like a $50 like Arab perfume, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and now they're realizing that there's a world beyond just what they see in like commercial stores. That was an eye opener for me as someone who genuinely loves fragrance. I've loved fragrance since I was in elementary school. I used to go to the department stores and spray everything on and I would come home just smelling (laughs) everything (laughs) like, yes, I would spray fragrance on my clothes Mm -hmm. so that I could smell that way at school because Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to come off and I couldn't obviously afford it at seven years old. But I got older and I started like smelling everything and realizing I have worn everything or I know everything here. Mm-hmm. Like I can smell something and say, mm, this smells just like this. Mm-hmm. My nose was so like sophisticated in that way. And then I found brands that were more like apothecary or that had more of like natural scents that were in neighborhoods that maybe had like small mom and pop shops mm-hmm. and they weren't in department stores. And mm-hmm. I fell in love with those types of fragrances. And I realized that people don't ever really come to these stores. Yeah. It's only people maybe who are like, higher SES that walk into shops like that, but they cost just almost sometimes, not all the time, yeah. as much as the brands in the Absolutely. department stores, but you're smelling things that are more unique and you don't smell like the next girl wearing Juicy Couture. Yeah. And, you know, I think that indie and niche um, perfumers are able to get away with that because they're not concerned about their fragrance being like mass consuming, like mass consumed by the masses. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to, it does not have to appeal to everybody. Um, They can be more experimental Mm -hmm. and it allows you to actually enjoy like the artistic process of creating something that's like very nuanced Mm -hmm. and very specific. I tried a fragrance once and it was called Wild Keratin Oud. Wild Keratin Oud. Yes. And it's by a, I want to say they're Swedish, but it was by a brand called Bohoboko and they're based in like uh, Poland, Polish. Uh, And the fragrance, when I smelled the fragrance, I thought, this is not something I think I would wear, okay. but it's so different. Like, it's so, it's very experimental. It's very earthy. Mm-hmm. You get a carrot nuance. You know, the carrot is very evident, but there's a lot of very kind of earthy elements with the oud as well. Mm-hmm. And I thought this is for a very specific type of person. I'm not that person. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Okay. Um, but it's also something I wouldn't see at like a Sephora or at a, you know, a, a Macy's. Right. But that's okay mm-hmm. because it allows the person that creates that fragrance to create something that, Maybe it's tied to a memory that they had, you know? And, and I think people should try to explore and go yeah. to those stores. Oh, absolutely. I think I, I highly recommend it. It's like a trying, um, it's like a buffet, right? Like you go somewhere, you try something, you're like, okay, I don't like this, but you go somewhere else and like, mm-hmm. oh, this is amazing. And understanding that there is more out there than what you maybe are accustomed to. Yes. And now that so many brands are coming out with fragrances, like you walk into Sephora, you walk into department stores and it can be overwhelming sometimes. Absolutely. Where do you think a person should start who doesn't feel like they tend to like find things that they like and okay. maybe they don't wear fragrance? Like my sister, for example, she's not a fragrance wearer because she says that fragrance never stays on her body. Mm-hmm. And she says she's done all the tricks and it doesn't mm-hmm. stay. Mm-hmm. And she has a hard time finding something that she just likes. So she's not necessarily like a girly girl. Okay. Where would you say that person can start? Have you ever had a medical concern and needed to find out, is this normal? You're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat, but you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. There are better ways to get the answers you want and care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet. (laughs) ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care that you need and deliver the type of experience that you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, 
Finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash DAF. ZocDoc.com slash D-A-F. Thank you, ZocDoc, for sponsoring this episode. Um, First thing is a lot of times people will say, like, I don't feel like my fragrances last on me. Mm-hmm. And I think next time you wear fragrance, ask somebody next to you if they can still smell your fragrance. Okay. Because there is this thing, so, there is such a thing as olfactory exhaustion mm-hmm. where you are smelling something and maybe after an hour or two, you can't smell it anymore. Mm-hmm. But other people around you can. It's kind of like people that collect trash, right? You're a garbage collector and all day you're picking up trash. I'm sure that... Someone that, unless you get used to that that smell or you experience that olfactory exhaustion, it would be so horrible to just be smelling trash all day. Yeah. <laughs> and so our bodies are kind of like that too with adapting to fragrance. And mm-hmm. there's so many times when I think to myself, golly, like my fragrance faded a couple hours ago. But then I'm in the elevator with someone. They're like, is that, someone smells really good in here. I'm like, oh, me? Oh, I <laughs> must be me. thought my fragrance, <laughs> you know, expired. You know, I thought it like, it, it's faded into oblivion. Mm-hmm. Um, but also a good test to kind of figure out what your taste is, is mm-hmm. trying discovery sets. You know, um, a lot of brands will sell discovery sets of, in, in the small sample size of their best selling fragrances. Um, places like Sephora, Ulta will have like their best of. They do one every year. It's usually the same fragrances, mm-hmm. but they do one um, that you can purchase and it'll have maybe 10 of their most popular fragrances. Mm-hmm. Um, even I think holiday sets too, that like, will have mini sizes. And so from there you can say, okay, these three fragrances out of this 10, I really liked. Mm-hmm. And then you can go on like maybe Fragrantica and see what did they have in common? Ooh, all three of these had like a lot of vanilla. Ooh, all three of these had a lot of rose. Ooh, I maybe I really like white florals, jasmine, peach, whatever. Um, and you can start to narrow down like what your taste, what your, where your taste leans. That's great. Yeah, I think that's a great thing to do is to figure out what notes are in there. And what I've also noticed just to be cautious with some brands is that sometimes they may say that there's a certain note in there, but maybe it's not the note that they say. Because sometimes people will smell something that says cherry and they're mm-hmm. like, I'm not smelling any cherry in here, mm-hmm. right? And so um, I definitely think it's good to have a, a couple of different fragrances, like oh, yeah. you're saying, not just one. Mm-hmm. Because if you try to find something just like it, it may smell different than mm-hmm. you expect. Now, I know some people get like irritated when they buy a fragrance and they say, it only lasted five minutes or only lasted a certain amount of time. Yeah. Do you think that people should also realize that like just because it doesn't last a long time doesn't mean it's not a good fragrance? Oh, because I think people, they'll associate a fragrance being like, awful because it didn't last mm-hmm. and they spent all this money on it. Mm-hmm. I always say, I started saying this, let's normalize the fragrances not always lasting 24-7. Now, and I say that because I actually am someone that will wear multiple multiple fragrances throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Like, I might start the morning feeling like, oh, I want to smell fresh and clean. Let me throw on this really beautiful, like, tuberose and musk. And then by the evening, I'm like, oh, I'm going out and I'm going on a date. Like, let me throw on something with, like, a little bit of cherry, something sweeter, something a little bit more dense. And I made a joke about Tom Ford's Lost Cherry fragrance. Oh, uh-huh. That one is notorious for having very poor longevity. I know, but I like it. I love it. And I said, <laughs> you know, this is my date night fragrance. I don't need my day for any fragrance to last 10 hours. Right. I'm going to be gone for two and a half hours, maybe three max, you know? Right. So if it lasts through the course of the date, it has done its job. <laughs> um, but also, like, let's also be okay with reapplying fragrance, you know? I know sometimes people like the convenience of a fragrance that lasts all day. Mm-hmm. Maybe l- gravitate towards fragrances like that. You know, truthfully, like if that is what your taste is, maybe a body spray might not be your best option. Maybe you have to spend a little bit more more money on an extrait or something that is going to have a higher perfume oil concentration. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you just, if you go in saying, I might have to reapply this fragrance in five hours, but I still really like it. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. More, more loving, you know? (laughs) So how many fragrances do you own? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I... I started taking like an inventory of my fragrances. Like an inventory? I started taking an inventory Girl. back in like 2021. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I lost count by January of 2022. I've not taken an inventory since then. I will say at last count, probably close to four. I'll 
Four hundred. Four hundred. At least, at least, at least. Four hundred. Granted. Why are you I have, storing these? I have two bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I have an office, so my I have an office. I work from home. Okay. So I've set up like two shelves that are full of fragrances. Okay. I have a shelf in my bedroom that's full of fragrances, and I have a few like uh, oh my god, this sounds crazy. No. I have some um, some. <laughs> Uh, what do they call them? Carts. Yes, that I, carts. I push around. Yeah. <laughs> and they're full of fragrances as well. But I, it's because my taste is so varied. Like okay. my taste goes from something I'll go into Ulta mm-hmm. or Sephora mm-hmm. or Macy's. Also, like I love a $20 fragrance from Amazon. Okay. But I also love the $500 fragrances like that. You go into like right. the Neiman Marcus, yeah. the like very Facts. upscale perfume um, boutiques. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to a few here in LA. There's one in, in Dallas I really love called The Scent Room mm-hmm. that they carry niche perfumes from like all over the world. Really? So, you know, you can go in there and you can purchase Exalté or you could purchase a $500 Raja Dove. So it's just an incredible experience. And last year when I was in uh, London. Okay. Oh, if you love fragrances, you yeah. have to go to London and go to Harrods. Okay. The top floor is called the Maison des Parfums. Oh. The Maison des Parfums. <laughs> but it's like their, <laughs> it's their luxury fragrance um, shopping level okay. where they have, each brand has their own kind of uh, boutique, so to speak, or display where they sell their fragrances and they have their customers come up there. So the most expensive fragrance I've smelled to date was from a brand called Henry Jacques and they had an $18,000 $18,000 fragrance. It's a custom fragrance. It's a custom, it's a so custom you, fragrance. Okay, so they make it to your your scent profile. They make it to your, specific okay. to your scent profile with the most exotic and pure notes sourced from all over the world. Oh. It takes like a year to make okay. each, like each order. Uh-huh. And when I ask them, who's your customer base? Because I'm assuming you don't do Afterpay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have Afterpay or Clarna over here. They said literally royal royalty. They said it started with royal family in like the Middle East. Okay. And royal family, like, you know, and, and very wealthy um, individuals in, in London, all over the world. They said they just, I think they're opening a boutique or have one here in Beverly Hills. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I need to go. Oh, yeah. I need to go. I need to walk in there and I need to... Walk in like you own the place. That's right. They asked me, do you want anything? I said, I'm flattered that you think I can afford this. <laughs> <laughs> you can afford it at some point, maybe not today. They, and they do have like yeah. their their the counter of fragrances mm-hmm. that those range from, I think about four three to three hundred for a smaller size to up to eight hundred. Oh, so they for have, the signature one. This is just their general, general. their general line, oh, okay. but their okay. custom atelier okay. fragrance line is the one that range from eighteen to thirty thousand dollars. And how much do you get in with that one? Is it they have different sizes or? It's different sizes. Okay. I think the eighteen thousand. Is just a general, like maybe like a five ounce, maybe like it's a pretty big bottle, okay. but it can go up to 30,000 because of the rarity of the materials that they source. I see. So, like, in particular, ouds can be uh, very expensive, yes. especially pure ouds. Definitely. Um, just depending on, like, you know, what the what the customer asks for. Mm-hmm. But it's incredible because you get something that's so unique. Nobody else has it. And um, I mean, it's, I, I assume people that probably can, you know, probably have like a a, Ro- a Rolls Royce in their driveway. You know, it's sure. it's not the average uh right. coupon clip and Coles girl like <laughs> myself. <laughs> wow. But it was it was so cool. Like I just thought, oh, this is so amazing. Like just seeing how um like they have a very particular type of customer. And then I thought, where's the black wine? Mm-hmm. Where's the black owned? And that's really what was very glaring to me mm-hmm. because I was up there and I saw Chanel. I saw Guerlain, um, Henry Jacques, Zhezhov, you know, all these brands, Mm -hmm. but there were no black owned brands that were represented in that like very high luxury space. Exactly. Um, Exactly. And the thing is shopping in on the mainland, maybe shopping in African countries Mm -hmm. with people that have perfumes, it might be different. It might be a different experience, but like as far as mainstream is concerned, you don't see many. And I think what a waste to not have black talent represented in these places, you know, especially when, you know, you look at all the just incredible ingredients that come from like different African countries that are sourced from yeah. and used in uh, fragrances, you know, in these other fragrance houses. Yes, of course. As as black people, we should have, you know, our signature on everything. Oh, absolutely. We shouldn't be eliminated out of one world. Mm-hmm. And the fragrance world is something that we all are consumers of. So absolutely. it's like and why? we spend so much money. Yeah, we spend so much money. I mean, just within like, a, I would think it was like a Newsweek or a Forbes article talked about how like the Black customer spends 
several, like they are the largest consumer of fragrances. They spend several billion dollars. Um, and even just like when I'm casually going through social media and I'm seeing black celebrities, like especially like Nigerian celebrities, mm-hmm. you know, those, they'll, they'll show like their fragrance and it's like Creed, $400. Right. Zherjoff, four or $500. Right. Raja, $500, $600 fragrances, you mm-hmm. know. I think, oh, they, pe- people are really out here dropping a major coin. Absolutely. All the time. All the time. But it's like, yeah, where's it going? And there's, there's there's no black representation mm-hmm. because it's still like such a kind of a boys club with like who you know and where you trained or you know what house you work with or mm-hmm. um you know your connection like who do I know that can get me into this kind of place or who do I know that will buy this and um help me to elevate mm-hmm. like my brand and my branding and I just think with Henry Jacques right with that brand in particular I it just took one wealthy client to say yeah. This is an eighteen thousand dollar exactly perfume. for their friends to be like, oh, right, okay, let me get the thirty thousand dollar one because he's wearing the eighteen. Like, That's right. and now it's just, I mean, they're all over the world now. That's what it takes. This video is sponsored by myself and my luxury fragrance line, Fine Forever Fragrances. We have three very elegant, feminine, and unique fragrances that you would love. 2911 is our debut fragrance, which is a perfect feminine everyday, daytime, or date night fragrance. It exudes mystery, elegance, and warmth. Silent Storm is another fragrance that we have, and that fragrance is a decadent gourmand fragrance. It's rich, it's smooth. It's refined and it has notes of sea salt, caramel, and it gives off an alluring and captivating impression when you wear it. And our final fragrance, Mustard Seed, is a sweet aquatic floral with pineapple, jasmine, and musk. It's perfect for brunch with the girls or basking in the sunshine. It is a sophisticated and memorable fragrance. So if you love to be the best smelling woman in the room, then you have to have these in your fragrance collection. Visit fineforever.com and use the code Dr. Daff for 10% off of your fragrances to support this show. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a major conversation considering, you know, I have a fragrance line as well. And it's something where bringing out these fragrances that, you know, were worked on by skilled perfumers mm-hmm. and the notes and, and everything that comes with that fragrance, mm-hmm. the price point can still be off-putting to some people, even though it's not. It's it's priced very fairly. Yeah. Um, but people who are not accustomed to fragrance in the fragrance world and how mm-hmm. much fragrances cost mm-hmm. sometimes can get turned off and say, oh, that's so expensive. And it's yeah. like, actually, it's very reasonably priced, but, you know, you're spending this same amount of money on brunch. Yeah. On brunch. On brunch. <laughs> you know, this is going to last you an entire year. I so. always think, too, like, to understand, it's really important to study your audience, right, as mm-hmm. well. Because I think that it's just like with any luxury purchase, right? There are people that would never spend $8,000 on a Chanel bag. They'd say, well, this coach bag is $800. This is still a, le- a nice leather bag, right? Mm-hmm. And this is what I can afford. And then there's people that... They would never spend, they, they'll spend $8,000 on a Chanel bag, but they would never spend $13,000 right. on a Birkin, right. you know? And I realized that it's really important to study your audience because you have to know who you're marketing to. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you will constantly get people that I would never spend this much mm-hmm. on this fragrance. Then don't do that. This is not for you. It's like Porsche, right? You understand that they are not going to advertise in just like, I don't know, like Teen teen Vogue, like, you know, a teenager is probably looking like at a a Honda or an Acura, it's IKEA. Um, They have a very particular audience of people that they want to purchase a German engineered high performance vehicle. Um, And it's not necessarily going to be the Kia audience or a Mazda audience, you know, and that's okay because all of them Mm -hmm. are valid and suit the lifestyle and taste of that person that's driving it. But it's understanding I can't convince this person. So I'm going to stick to the audience that I know is going to purchase this. And it's the same thing with your niche fragrance. Yes. And that's that's 100% true. And I think that my audience is completely comfortable with it. But mm-hmm. it's, you know, certain people who I think, like you're saying, that's just not what they mm-hmm. see as valuable. And they mm-hmm. can feel like they can get something somewhere yeah. else that's more reasonably priced in their opinion. But I think it's the idea of not 
believing that there's something wrong with this mm. price point because they don't understand what yeah. comes with it. Just like the luxury Chanel bag. The yeah. reason why it's priced that way, maybe, I don't know, is because of what is made with or whatever it is that, you know, added up to that yeah. particular price point. But not to say like, this bag should not be sold for this amount of money because mm -hmm. it's just a bag, right? Yeah, exactly. So I think it's just that understanding. But your audience does matter and people actually i think are not informed enough about fragrance yeah. especially people of color yeah because they don't understand it it seems like okay you're just putting any any price tag on it so i think just the education behind yeah what goes in the fragrance and yeah. why things are priced at eighteen thousand yeah. dollars yeah i remember when i told someone like eighteen thousand dollars <laughs> i said you know what though it's the you're paying the artisan person that's creating the fragrance, yes. you are sourcing the materials because, I mean, the materials themselves, they're raw ingredients that you have to purchase and they'll break down into a fragrance, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much that goes into it that a mass consumed, a mass created fragrance might not necessarily have to, um, to deal with. But the biggest thing is also understanding that it's kind of like, okay, so my sister told me a story the other day. If she's watching this, I hope you're okay with this. But she was at dinner and she was wearing Baccarat Rouge. I picked up a bottle for her when I was in Paris. And at dinner, someone said, oh, Tosin, you smell so good. Mm -hmm. She said, thank you. Like, And the person said, I think it's Baccarat Rouge, right? Mm -hmm. She said, of course. You know, mm -hmm. My sister got it for me. And someone at the table was like, I would never spend that much on a fragrance. And she said, well, no one asked you. <laughs> I appreciate that because it's true. Nobody did ask you, but also you don't have to. Like if you That's don't okay. want to spend that much money on a fragrance, you don't have to. That's right. But someone at that same table recognized, yeah. said, oh, that's Baccarat Rouge. Uh -huh. You know, great taste. Right. And I realized that with everything, you have to really focus on your target audience mm -hmm. and also helping people that maybe want to break into that audience feel comfortable mm -hmm. about, okay, I want to like maybe explore more luxury fragrances, mm -hmm. but I don't really know how. Like, I want to make sure I'm getting my money's worth. Like, I want to make sure I'm paying this $300, but it's going to, I'm really going to love it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to fulfill all the needs I have for a fragrance. That's right. Because there are a lot of brands that have those high price points, but the fragrances smell very different. And just mm -hmm. like the way that they're released or the bottle mm -hmm. and all those different things. It's like, that's where that money is going to. So like yeah. what's important. Packaging. To you? Packaging. Do oh my you goodness. want your fragrance to sit out and be part of your home? Or the can collect you stuff it's it a collector's item. Yeah. 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 There's a brand. I'm trying to, I think it's Raja. Mm -hmm. Raja is like a very high, very esteemed perfumer. Right. And his packaging is just so incredible. Like you mm -hmm. open it, it's velvet, it's yeah. lug and it's a item that you could display yes. you know and when you're paying for Raja fragrance of course part of that money is going into the packaging the experience exactly. but it's the experience and exactly. what I always tell people with luxury fragrances a lot of times sometimes you you have brands that they just give you a bomb fragrance it's, the packaging's not great but you know oh my god this fragrance is a work of art right. and sometimes there are fragrances there are brands that say I'm going to give you the whole experience yes from the second that you pick this fragrance up the atomizer you know it's so, the mist is so fine you know the box is so gorgeous mm -hmm. so beautifully crafted mm -hmm. you know this is something you could display as a work of art in your home um you have to understand that the money is going into that too. Exactly. Um, but, exactly. you know, there's times that I've bought like, you know, it's it just a, a fragrance that's going to be like in a Macy's is not going to be a fragrance that's going to be in a Saks necessarily. You know? And I think people need to also recognize that yeah. there are differences in that because people, some people have never walked into a Saks. Yeah, that's true. And they walk in and <laughs> they'll see those fragrances and they'll faint. Like, yeah. wait, how much is this? Absolutely. I can't afford this. And it, it, your location means, you know, a lot too. Like, I remember there was a video once going around saying, Baccarat Rouge is so overrated. It's everywhere. <laughs> like, we're tired of it. This is the <laughs> official scent of Atlanta. <gasps> what? It was so funny. It was so funny though. <laughs> but it, it was funny because it's probably true, right? And people in the comments were like, yeah, I live in Atlanta. So so true. That's but then I thought, hilarious. I grew up in Oklahoma City. Okay. And in Oklahoma City, up until like a year or two ago, uh -huh. there was not a counter that sold Baccarat Rouge oh. that you could go smell in person. Okay. We had Macy's, we have Dillard's, right. we have Sephora and Ulta, but none of them carry Baccarat Rouge. No. So unless somebody maybe goes to Dallas or mm -hmm. another city and purchases and wears it, you're not smelling it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, so maybe it's oversaturated in your city because of the availability. Yeah. But in Oklahoma, I might be the only person on my in my neighborhood that has Baccarat Rouge That's or so into a restaurant and I'm the only one wearing it. That's so true. So it just, it depends on your proximity. I always think it's really important to go into things, um, understanding privilege. You have the privilege of having a Saks mm -hmm. and a Neiman Marcus. Mm -hmm. Not everyone does. 
And just to be careful with fragrances that everyone likes, because Baccarat Rouge is not my favorite fragrance. I'll mm -hmm. be honest with you. I don't really like how it smells on me. Mm -hmm. So I love Ella Rose from mm -hmm. the same brand. And yeah. that fragrance is beautiful on me. And the there's an Oud one. I can't remember the name right now. But Is it Oud Satin Mood? Yes. Oud Satin Mood. Beautiful. beautiful. And so it's like, if you just buy Baccarat Rouge because everyone has it, mm -hmm. then you may be disappointed because oh, I, absolutely. I was disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And that's true. So. And that's why fragrance is so personal. Mm -hmm. You should wear it. Um, the most popular fragrance of all time, mm -hmm. well, in the last like 10 years, uh, Black Opium. Oh, is really? So is it popular. popular. Oh, it's one of the most, it's one of the best selling fragrances in the world. It doesn't disappoint. Now, I will say this. I have a friend that wore it and every time she would wear it, I would think, oh my God, you smell incredible. Okay. And so for my birthday, the same year, she said, for me, I got you a bottle because you always compliment me okay. and I think you would like this. I know you love fragrances. So I said, okay. I wore it twice and I said, wow, get this off of me ASAP. It smelled <sighs> terrible on me. And since then, I have made Black Opium my fragrance nemesis online. I, I have like a running <laughs> a running joke with Black Opium on all my pages. Uh -huh. I said, I once said, if you see me say I'm wearing Black Opium, just know the kidnappers got me. <laughs> it's my code. Save me. But no, seriously, like it's such a popular fragrance, but it smells it, terrible on me. I see. And I always said, that's okay. Something can smell good on other people and not smell good on you because fragrance is personal to your taste. I am never doing that again because every time someone has something that they're wearing and I go and buy it every single time, oh no. it smells awful on me. Every no. single I'm like, I'm, I'm just not doing it anymore. Have you noticed anything in common? with? No, they're always different, different scents, different mm -hmm. profiles. But on me, it's like, I don't know, maybe God just like, you know what? You need yeah. to just figure things out. In yeah. your own way. And I need to smell it on me in the stores okay. because smelling it on someone else in you know, their body chemistry and just, you know, yeah. it just doesn't work for me. So now I want to ask you a question. What would you say your fragrance taste is and that you tend to lean towards the most? I love a good rose. Okay. There's different kinds of rose. I, I don't like the roses that are too bitter, but I like rose scents. I like profiles that are more warm. Okay. Uh, gourmands. Okay. I love anything that's sweet, but not overly sweet. Okay. I do enjoy fragrances that are a little bit more earthy, things okay. that have like geranium, ylang ylang, um, things that maybe are a little bit more complicated. So there's like a juxtaposition of something like really sweet and really woodsy together. Um, so I, I'm really complicated with my fragrances. Sometimes I just like something that smells like clean laundry because I'm just walking around the house, you know? So I, I'm kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. but I do notice that things that are a little bit too powdery, like you mentioned Dulce and Gabbana light blue. I, I do not like that fragrance at all. Mm -hmm. But if maybe you sweetened it up a little bit and took out some of the musky notes, okay. I would probably like it. Um, I'm really all over the place, honestly, when it comes to fragrance. I I don't have 400, but... It's, it, and to be fair, a, lot of, probably, a lot of them were sent to me. A lot of them were sent to me. <laughs> and like 30 of them are Exalte. So okay. <laughs> like 30 bottles well, are like my fragrance. So. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me what what are your favorite fragrances to wear? Some of the, the ones that stand out to you in terms of when you wear it, you just feel like, okay, this is me. Like this is, this is me. This is what my skin should probably be oozing out. <laughs> well, I would say I consistently love floral fragrances, specifically okay. like the Turkish rose, Bulgarian rose. Yes. Like I love a very juicy, fresh rose. Yes. Um, so a lot of my fragrance taste is centered around that. Yeah. I also have realized my taste leans a little bit more towards the, what they call like the Arab style of fragrances. So okay. sometimes like something that's a little spicy, yes. um, something that's a Orientals. little bit heavy. Yes. Um, something that's going to be a little bit warmer and sweeter. Okay. Um, I love similar to me. Wait, so. That's why I was like, <laughs> I think you might like Exalté. But <laughs> I will, I will. Tell me some of your favorite rose fragrances. Okay. Um, so one of my favorites is a, um, it's from a brand I discovered a couple years ago. I bought it for my birthday. I do a birthday fragrance every year. Mm -hmm. And it's called Mysterious Rose. And the brand is called Amor Oud. It's a pricier brand. Okay. But it's an extra day perfume. So okay. high perfume oil concentration. Right. Oh, incredible pre presentation. You open the box, velvet inside. You know, it's it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, beautiful bottle. And it's like a chocolatey rose. Mm. Like it's a really beautiful, sweet, I, almost like a wet. Like the rose note is like almost kind of wet. Like it's mm. so just juicy and velvety. Okay. Very velvety, chocolatey rose. It's called Mysterious Rose. I have not smelled anything like it. Really? But it's it's so beautiful. Okay. Um, so I like that. But I also love like Oud Satin Mood. Uh, you know, like that's yes. a rose as well. Rose-centered Oud, vanilla, violet. Right. Um, and it's going to be a little bit more dense, a little bit more heavy. Mm -hmm. Then you have like lighter rose fragrances, like mm -hmm. the Ala Rose, you know. Mm -hmm. Something that's going to be a, like a, kind of like almost like a, a fresh garden kind yes. of rose, you know. 
Um, have you smelled Rose of No Man's Land from Byredo? Yes, I have. That's a great rose as well, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it's also there's also another one called from Byredo as well. I don't remember. The- oh, is it like Young Rose? Young Rose, you know. So you things. you get like different nuances of mm-hmm. rose, and then you have Exalté, which is kind of like a spicy sweet rose. Mm, I need that. So it's like a <laughs> pink pepper. I love pink pepper. Pink pepper. Yeah. It has like that. Um, Turkish rose as well. Okay. But then you get like a little bit of orange blossom and jasmine. And then a lot of vanilla and amber in the base that just really warms it up and sweetens it up. Yeah. And gives it this like creaminess that just, it just sticks to your skin, but it's not loud. I always say, I tell people it's an intimate fragrance. Okay. You have to be close enough to me yes. to be able to enjoy my fragrance. And not everybody can be close to me. Tell me a little bit about Exalté. How did you get started with the brand and... What was your vision behind it? So when my business partner approached me, she said, you know, for me, I feel like I constantly I constantly see brands that partner with um, non-people of color, non-Black creators. Mm-hmm. She said, but I've been watching you. She said, I love, I know you have taste. And the thing is, a lot of times you can have the taste and the vision and you just need someone that will help you with the resources mm-hmm. to bring that vision to life. Um, a lot of your favorite brands, like I'll even use like Kaoli as an example, like mm-hmm. They create gorgeous fragrances, mm-hmm. but like Mona herself is not mixing the fragrances in a lab somewhere. You know, right. they have a team of people that help them create these beautiful fragrances. Mm-hmm. She said, Fumi, I can give you a team of people. I know people that can help you bring your vision to life. Um, let me, let's talk about what your vision is. Like, what would you, if you could make one fragrance, what would it look like? So when we met, our team was in Paris, mm-hmm. um, our distributors, our perfumer, our chemist, everything. Um, they said, you're probably one of the easiest people to work with because you knew exactly what you wanted. That's right. And so I said, these are the nuances. This is the vibe, you know. Um, this is the scent profile I'd like to work with. So mm-hmm. we just went through like dozens of different combinations. Mm-hmm. And so we found the one that just made sense. And um, it was it was so incredible because like I said, we work with an amazing perfumer who's worked with huge brands. Like okay. your favorite brands at Neiman Marcus okay. have been created by this guy. Um, you know, we worked with a great manufacturer who's you know, created packaging for your favorite brands. Mm. You're walking to a Nordstrom, mm-hmm. your favorite brands have been manufactured where my perfume was manufactured. So I thought to myself, what an opportunity to create a fragrance at such a level, mm-hmm. you know, because not everybody can get this type of experience for their first products. And so I didn't want to take it for granted. And I wanted to make sure, oh, I can stand behind this. Like mm-hmm. this perfume speaks for itself. Like mm-hmm. when you smell this and I've, and I've shared this with fragrances. Um, I've shared this with uh, fragrance brands and fragrance brand owners. I met Parfums de Marley. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows Delina. I met the guy at an event um, this past this past May mm-hmm. in Dallas. He came to Dallas at the Scent Room, which is a perfume niche, niche perfume store in Dallas. Okay. And he said, Fumi, I've heard so much about you. And I need to smell this fragrance that everyone's talking about. And so I, you know, I showed him Exalta and he was like, He's like, oh my God, like this, this is so gorgeous. He said, this is a, a brilliant fragrance, you know, very French. Yes. So I'm sure there was a little bit lost in translation, but sure. um, <laughs> it, it was just very complimentary of Exalté. And he said, um, just keep, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And I thought, what a compliment, what to, to receive it from someone like this, that's so esteemed within my industry. And I really um, felt proud to know, you know what, there's not a lot of people that look like me in these places, mm-hmm. but even though I do look like me, that my product is not a shabby product. That's right. Yeah. Oh, of course not. I'm like, even though you do look like you. You're exactly. <laughs> well, people expect that. People think, oh, you're black. So it must so be are like... are you mixing this in your kitchen? Uh-huh. Is this, you You know, and everyone starts somewhere, you know, but like, it's really hard to say, I created something at this level. That's right. That's can stand shoulder to shoulder with your favorite brands. It can stand shoulder to shoulder with the Delinas. That's right. It can stand shoulder to shoulder with the Francis Kirk Gion. That is such an accomplishment. I'm so proud of you. I can't you. wait to smell it. Now, you know, I do have my fragrance line. Yes, I can't wait Fine forever. That. Yes, I actually brought a couple fragrances for you to smell. Me too. I brought you oh, Exalté baby. as well. Okay, so we have to... Great minds think alike. Okay, let's swap. Okay. Let me smell Okay, so this Exalté. is Exalté. This is our new size. Ah. We released a 100 ml size last year and okay. sold out. And we were just so happy. We had a demand for more. So we decided, you know, let's do a 30 ml size. This okay. is a perfect travel size. Yes. And, um, can I open? oh, of course. And you can, you know, take it with you on the go. Um, and I also found the price a little bit more accessible as well. So we just kind of wanted to hit all the marks with bringing this out for the people. I love this color, by the way. Thank you. This color is so beautiful. It's, it matches the couch. It's very regal. And, you know, green was my power color at the time mm-hmm. when I 
came up with this um, color combo. I just wanted something that just represented hope and growth and prosperity, you know? And that's why I saw like my vision with this was, you know, what an opportunity. How beautiful. I love how your signature is on there. That is so beautiful. Exalté. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. She's French. (laughs) Pulse point. Ooh. Oh. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Oh, it's so elegant. Thank it's you. not harsh that even in that first mm-hmm. whiff. It's so I wanted a cla- like I wanted to, oh, this to is, create a this classic is, profile. This is like an elevated version of one of my favorite fragrances called Roses Vanilla from mm-hmm. Mansara, but this has like other Mm-hmm. Other notes in it that just makes it is that it's, a lot of people compare rich. it because of that the rose vanilla yes. that warmth yes. that sweetness, but there is like that orange blossom, the, the orange jasmine, blossom and the jasmine, the lemon it, that you first smell, that pink pepper is so zesty, and yeah, it just really puts it together to create just like an experience. You did amazing. Thank you. This so is much. really thank you. Good. Oh my goodness. Where can they find this? So Exalté is sold online at BellaOra.com. Bella Aura is my business partner. They're based in Toronto. Okay. They are a skincare brand, but they okay. said, let's try something different. Oh, wow. And I said, thank you for trying it with me. <laughs> so okay. we actually also carried it at the Set Room in Dallas, which is a niche perfume store. They're sold out at the moment. Oh, We're hoping to restock they're there. They're sold out. You yeah. go, girl. Thank you so much. So it's been, <laughs> I mean, they get so much foot traffic. There's so people walk in every day and ask for Exalté. I thought, oh, that's incredible. So it's it's very like it just we had our launch party there as well when we launched last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a wonderful experience. And the biggest thing is I feel like fighting. I feel like I've had to fight every day to prove my why I deserve to be in the space, you know. Um, and I've really just been very proud of the receptive nature that we've just received from so many people and the positive feedback as well. Oh, it's definitely worth it. Tell me the the meaning behind the name. Exalté is actually a name that I dreamed up like 15 years ago. Like it was like an old username I used to have online. Mm -hmm. Um, But the name itself means something that should be celebrated and something that should be uplifted. And that is how I want people to feel when they put this on. Like, I feel like you should feel like you are the best smelling person in the room. You should feel like you are someone that should be, that should be, exalted, some celebrated, uplifted, elevated, an elevation. And um, the name was just, it was so perfect when they, I said, what's the name of the fragrance? Like the perfumer. He was like, I said, exalted. I said, is she French? I said, no, I'm from Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it just was, it just was such a beautiful name. Oh, and it, is beautiful. it just suited the, um, it suited the, the fragrance, honestly. Yes. yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I can't wait to see it. Well, yes, I like I said, with these two, okay. I don't have the packaging, okay. but the packaging is velvet. It's a beautiful experience. So you can Ooh. experience it at home okay. on your own. This is our debut fragrance. Ooh. The fragrance line is called Fine it's Forever, packaging. but this one is called 2911. Oh, I love, I don't know, I just love it when it's like that. It's like a gift. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. And oh, like man. you said, you like these scents that have like vanilla, pink pepper, amber, oud. That Those are some of the notes in this fragrance. Ooh, the packaging. I love, I'm just... I've just become so fascinated by packaging in the last couple of years. And this is beautiful. Thank you. Perfect size to throw in your bag. Yes. You can travel with this as well. Yes. If it's in my purse. <laughs> Great atomizer. Thank you. Great. I love someone who can appreciate these things. Oh, I love a good atomizer. I had a perfume once that had a, a terrible mist. Every time <sighs> I feel like it just spring chunks of water at me. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so this is actually... Definitely, it's a light. It's like a little bit lighter. I think it's, it's like funny how people say fresh, that. more fresh because I feel like it's it's deep, but maybe that's just how I see it. I think it's how it's sitting on my skin right now. I'm like experiencing like the top notes. It will change on you. It smells so fresh though. Like I love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And fresh, not fresh like cotton candy fresh, like no. cotton or musk, but like something very uplifting. Mm-hmm. Like uplifting is the word I'm looking for. Yes, and there is some sweetness in it as well. But I'm getting that a little bit of sweetness. Thank you. 
This is like a great everyday kind of fragrance. It is. Going. It's an everyday fragrance. Oh, it's wonderful. Why it's our signature. What is 2911? It is a Bible scripture, Jeremiah 2911, and it talks about God's plan for your life and how he has plans for you and his plans for you are oh, wow. good. And it's oh. just a reminder, God's love. Oh, this is wonderful. I yes. love that. This is such Thank an amazing, I love the meaning behind this Thank as well. Thank you. And it, the whole fine forever means that as long as you have God in your life, you will be fine forever. Oh my God, you will be fine forever. Oh, this is so wonderful. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me, oh, don't let my girlfriend get a hold of this. In the group chat, oh, they're going to go crazy. The group chat, Oh yes. my gosh, they love fragrances. And then this one is called Silent Storm. So this is our oh, newest. Oh, a gorgeous bottle. Thank you. The Ooh, packaging. Like our deco kind of. Mm-hmm. The so packaging cool. is actually really beautiful. I wish you could experience it here, but you'll experience yeah, it at um, home. It's like kind of like an art deco kind of style, which is so unique. Thank you. And that so, one is, I believe ooh, that one ooh. is Silent, Sto- oh, Silent Storm. This is incredible. You like Silent Storm? Yeah. Oh, I love this. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. It's it's a little unique. I do. Mm-hmm. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, wow. And then this one is called Mustard Seed. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. When you have 400 fragrances, I feel like I, something is going to remind you of something, but I'm hoping these ones are unique enough to be They are. Oh, this one's drying down beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is gorgeous. Ooh. I, I can't put a finger. I, the thing is like, I'm spraying the, I can't think you know oh this reminds me of something like, that's good so that's i mean good. i'm happy about that that was part of my goal in creating it like it needs to be Ooh, this is completely beautiful. oh my god this is yes beautiful. that one's mustard seed that's the one oh. i get the most compliments on when i, I wear it why. oh this is so warm yes. it's beautiful thank you Ooh, what's in this that one has ylang ylang it has um oh man it's been a while mm, i was gonna say because there's some white floral notes i'm picking up the white floral elements i think, it's, I think there's white i think there's jasmine yeah um, I should know this, but my mind just dropped. Like, is there something fruity in this? People always think that there's something fruity in that, and I, I think there's peach in it, but I, it's it, say, it comes off at fruity, but I don't. There's something in it. I'm picking. It, it could be peach. It so reminds me. It does remind me of a see. peachy element, but it's beautiful. I'm working on so many new scents right now. So there's pineapple, and I think that's the only thing. There is Maybe Turkish rose is. and orchid. Okay, um, it's gorgeous. Maybe it's a lychee you're smelling. Oh, it's beautiful. I don't know. I can't decide on my favorite. <laughs> right down. So incredible. Thank yes. you. I'm really happy that you like it. It means a lot coming Ooh, from I you. I don't know. This one is mustard seed. Is, mustard seed is, is yeah. It's, 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 it's put your really, foot in this. Yeah. <laughs> put your foot in mustard seed. <laughs> Thank beautiful. you. It smells really like, I don't know how to describe this, but this is a fragrance that, I don't know if, I, I wouldn't recommend this to like a 21-year-old. I no. think that you, uh, someone with a, a more of a, a fine taste. Agreed. So elegant, you know? Thank you. I wanted these oh, these two in particular to be very elegant and just, Yeah. You know Yeah. Exalt hate. Exalt hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Like you really nailed it. This thank you so much. Yeah, I will send you yours. Oh, this thank you. Your, Ooh, your today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Thank you for me. Well, thank you so much for being here today and just sharing all of your fragrance knowledge and so incredibly proud of you for what you're doing in the space and just bringing luxury fine fragrances into the fragrance world by beautiful black woman. Thank you. And um, I appreciate you just being here and sharing all that you shared. I hope that people are able to experience Exalté and just experience your channel. Thank you so much. (laughs) And I'm so grateful that you shared this with me as well. It's so incredible. And I'm going to do a little bit more of a deep dive to see, like, you know, just to hear more about your fragrance journey, too, because I know this is obviously not your first rodeo. You have several amazing fragrances, and I can only continue to anticipate what you'll continue to bring us as well. Thank you. you. And where can they find you online? So I try to make it simple. So you can find me on the same handle all over the place. I'm Fumi Monet. um, And I'm on YouTube. I am on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm even on Pinterest. So if you look for me... (laughs) You can probably find me um, with the same username everywhere. But uh, Exalté specifically is available at BellaAura.com. We do ship worldwide. And uh, we've had people just all over. I mean, I, I had someone today from Poland that messaged me and said wow. they received their fragrance. And I was like, wow, that's so nice when people who I are international that. support. Yeah. It is such a wonderful thing. Yeah, so the fragrance is being smelled everywhere. Oh, I need somewhere, to a bottle. Somewhere, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, someone is wearing Exalté. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. I hope you have an amazing day. And thank I you. continue to wish you all the success with your line and all your endeavors as well. Thank you, my thank love. You. And thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.